In today's tutorial, we're learning how to make this animated steps PowerPoint. As soon as you click, you get the titles on the slide. And then once you click again, you actually get more room. So it's a variation of an existing presentation that I've done. But I noticed that a lot of people wanted to put more content on the slide. So with this effect, you can actually increase the surface area of the content in your presentation. And it nicely loops all the way back to the initial starting slide so you can give a nice presentation. If you want to follow along in the tutorial, this is the color palette that I've used so you can pause the video and copy it to your PowerPoint. Let's start from a blank slide. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change our color palette because this is the standard one from Office. And then if you scroll up, these are your customized color palettes. So you can customize one here with the color codes. I'm going to choose this sunset theme and I'll go to home, right click, format background, and we're going to give this a very dark tint of red. Next, we're going to add a rectangle on the screen. So drag a rectangle all the way from the top to the bottom. We're going to remove outline and give this a yellow color fill. Hold control, shift and drag to create a copy and then hold the shift key to connect it again with the first block. You can hold control if you want to scroll backwards. Repeat the step a few times until we have five different blocks of equal size. You can see we have this spacing here on the right, so they're not evenly distributed or they don't evenly fill the slides. So we're going to select them all holding shift, right click group or control G. And then we're going to drag the selection so that it meets the end of the slide. Right click, ungroup again. And this way we have five rectangles that evenly fill the screen. Now we're going to give them a slightly darker tint each time we go to the right and the last one there we go as a next step we're going to select them all individually so hold shift right click format object and let's give them a shadow so go to shape options the second option here and then shadow let's choose a preset so the offset is to the right or the shadow drops to the right increase the blur a little bit and transparency to about 70 percent now, if you can't see it, that means that the shapes are in different order. So let's send two back and repeat that for the other ones. And this way you can see that the shadow starts to come up on the shapes. So this way it's like a paper cutout effect with the yellow one on top and the darkest one at the bottom. Now we want to add some content to the slide. So we go to insert text box and then let's drag a text box on the first slide. Let's give this 0, 1 as a number, go to home, as a font, let's try Montserrat, extra bold, make it light yellow, center it in the middle, and let's try 50, can even be quite a bit bigger, around 88, that will look quite good on the slide. We're going to copy this so that each of the tabs has its own text box with a number, and then we're going to change them, of course, to 0, 2, 0, 3. 0, 4, and 0, 5. The reason I use the 0 is because it looks more balanced in my opinion. It's a personal choice. Go to insert, icons, and here we're going to look for some network icons or could be any type of icon that you want. Let's select a few that look nice. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and maybe a QR code or something. Let's see we can find the QR code. There we go, five. We're going to give them all the same white or yellowish color and then drag them so we distribute them on the slide. Position them all at the same height. And this one goes to the front. And then we have the QR code that we want to select and put that to the right side of the slide. And then this one, we position it in the middle as well. Select them all, arrange, align and align to middle so they're all on the same height and let's maybe position them upwards just a little bit now before we move further we want to make sure that the layer order is exactly as we want it so we're going to group the tabs together for now so select them all and ctrl g one tab at a time and then send each group to the back so the yellow to the back orange goes behind darker orange goes behind that red and the darkest red so we have the same letter effect and then we can select them all 
and ungroup this again. The reason why we do this is because if we want to add an animation later, that all of the orders, the layer orders are exactly the same. Now this is the foundation of the slide. Now we're going to duplicate them and get some content on there. For that, we're going to select the four tabs, so hold shift, control G to group them together and then make them slightly smaller. Grab the left one or the yellow one and connect that one to the other tabs. Don't forget to ungroup them and now we're going to position the content in the middle of each of the tabs. There we go. So number four, number three, that one goes on orange. Number two on the lighter color, the lighter orange. And then we're also grabbing a number one and centering that in the middle of the yellow area. We're going to select the text box and drag it on top of the yellow box. Here we're going to copy some content. This is quite a large font, so maybe let's reduce that to about 12. And there we go. And then center it in the middle of your text box or of your yellow box. And this way we create some more space to show content on the slide or in the tabs. Right click, duplicate the slide. We're going to cut the text box. And now we're going to reduce the size of the yellow text box or the yellow box so that it's the same size as the other ones. Select the content and position it to the left. And this time we're going to expand the orange one. Grab the content, position it in the middle of the orange one. And now we're going to paste the text here or the dummy text. I'm going to change it slightly, so add some words so that the morph transition won't mess it up, but your content will be different anyway, so that doesn't matter. And that is the second slide done. Now let's duplicate it again. And the further along you are in the process, the easier it will be. Grab the orange one, reduce the size so everything is equal. You can see these smart guides assisting us and position it in the center as well. Grab the darkest orange, select content, center it, release. Release it in the middle, paste the text box, add your own content or modify the text as you want, and then duplicate again two more times. Reduce the size so they're always equal sizes. Get the text, move number three to the right, expand number four, center it in the middle, and you see this goes quite fast for your content. Paste it again in the middle, and then one final time, copy. Cut this one reduce the size and increase number five. Position both in the middle of your slide, paste the content, and finally we are done with the content slides. There we go, so final touch here. Now the one thing left to do is to duplicate the initial slide and select that or drag that one all the way to the bottom. This means if we now add the morph transition to all of the slides, that the content will nicely shift. So let's preview what we have already. This is our opening slide with the different tabs. And if we click, we expand one of the boxes and content will appear. Click again to number two, content for number two appears and so forth. Click again, number three, number four, and eventually number five. Now, because this is a very similar tutorial to what I've done before, but just an expansion to show you an extra effect, I also want to give you that introduction animation. So let's duplicate the initial slide. And here we want to stack the layers on top of each other, or we want to stack them all to the left. So grab the orange, hold shift and drag it to the left until the content disappears. Do the same with the darker orange and the same with the red. And then eventually the last tab, there we go. And then we want to select all of them and we'll increase this here so we can easily see how far we need to drag it to the side or you can drag it down if you want. Position it so that the yellow meets the line and we have a nice, a nice rainbow color chart on the, on the left side. Now we want to add some text. So let's drag a nice text box. And here we can do steps. Change the font to Montserrat again. Sub font, extra bold. Make it that yellow, almost white. Let's try 75, it can be a bit larger. Let's try 125, center it in the middle here. And now let's create a copy, which can be a lot smaller, 40. And let's 
type in animated. And the sub font, we're going to use Sign Painter, make it yellow, and see if it fits nicely below that one. I'm going to choose a little bit of a brighter yellow. That looks a bit better. Right click Format Shape, Text Options, and let's give this a drop shadow to the top. Increase the blur, transparency, and of course the distance. That way it gives a nice shadow on the word. So this is our title slide. Now if we want to add a cool effect, let's select the text, right click, send to back, and I'll copy it, paste it on the second slide, drag it all the way to the left. Of course, we also have to send it to the back here, drag the subtitle to the left as well. And now let's see if we can, and maybe we can also use this slide as the ending slide so that we have a nice loop presentation. So duplicate the slide, drag it all the way to the bottom. And that means we also have to copy our title here from the left and then send that to the back as well. And now let's apply a morph transition or make sure that the morph transition is applied on all of the slides. Morph. And now let's preview the result. So here we have quite a nice opening slide, one that we've seen before, but we go a little bit more into detail. As soon as we click, the content will appear on the slide, the tabs. And once we click again, you get more in detail or more space to explain your content step by step. And that is something which wasn't really possible in the previous tutorial. So that's why I've made a extension of the existing tutorial, which was quite a popular one. So I'm hoping that this helps you guys out in your presentations. And you can nicely loop it so that you can start and end with the same slide. As an extra bonus while presenting the presentation, you can do this in a linear way where you skip from the opening slide to the next presentation using the morph or the next slide and then go again in more, more detail on the first step, click again, go to the second step. But you could also do this in a non-linear way using the presentation mode. So if you go into presentation mode, you see the slides at the bottom. So let's say you want to do some more interaction with the slide or with the so let's say you want to do some more interaction with the audience. You could ask a question and then reveal number three first if you want. And then maybe look at number one. So you can do it in a non-linear order. After number one, you could jump to number five. And with the morph transition, this will always work nicely. Thanks a lot for watching. If you want to learn more about PowerPoint, please watch the video on the screen right now.